Hello, hello, guys. How are you doing today? Welcome to your favorite um, show once again, uh, Pharma Up TV on um, Facebook and YouTube Live. Um, we are here today to talk about um, snail farming, snail production, and um, we have a very wonderful guest here who, you know, is going to be in the best um, place to talk to us about um, every aspect of um, snail production. And um, once again, it's Happy New Year to you guys. Um, hopefully, this year will be a year of better things to come. And um, we'll be able to get rid of COVID-19 um, as well, hopefully this year. And things will do start getting back to normal. And um, the show is just about to start. Um, we're going to go ahead, do our intro, and we'll come back and um, get on with the show proper. Thank you. So welcome back, guys, and uh, thank you so much for joining us so far. And um, your, like we said, this is your show, uh, Pharma Up TV, where we get to talk about um, different aspects of um, uh, agriculture and um, how to do, do things right. Uh, we try to put things in perspective so that when you start, you start up right and you can make a success out of farming. Um, like I said, once again, our topic today is about um, the business of snail um, production. And uh, we have a wonderful guest here. Uh, he also has a YouTube channel as well, which we're going to be um, putting on screen for you guys to see. Um, on his YouTube channel, it's, 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 it's always um, a wonderful introduction where he introduced himself as the, your favorite, favorite animal scientist. That's one of the things that got me, you know, attracted to watching his um, YouTube channel. Um, so we have him here with us and he's going to be putting us through on um, so many aspects of um, snail production and um, business of it, marketing, how to, you know, make um, profit out of it. Um, we have today with us um like i said your favorite animal scientist in the name of uh mr amos kesta a boy i hope um, i pronounced that well and he's 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 already laughing there and <laughs> welcome to the show i hope i pronounced that well i still butchered it uh, <laughs> I just murdered my name there. I just murdered it. <laughs> Sorry about that, um, Kester. No uh, can you pronounce it um, properly for us again? Yeah, the name is Mr. Amos Kester Ebiowe. Ebiowe. Don't don't me. Uh, it's yeah. the it's the phonetic part of it I was using. So <laughs> <laughs> don't mind me. Sorry about that, um, Ebiowe. I'll, I'll try to remember that again. And um, welcome to the show, Farm yeah, Hub TV. Um, I I introduce you like you. I tried introducing you like you always do on your YouTube channel by saying your your favorite animal scientist. <laughs> but you know, I would love you to do to, you know to do the introduction yourself. So can you go ahead and just um give us a little bit introduction of yourself, please. All right. Uh, first and foremost, I must appreciate you. I must say thank you very much, Farmer Hub TV, all the way from Canada. I'm sure you must have seen a lot of videos on the YouTube on different snail farmers doing a lot of jobs, different professionals in the field of snail farming. And you saw the opportunity to call me here to have this interview. It's more like a privilege could have been someone else. It's not like uh, we are the only snow farmers there. No, there are lots mm -hmm. of professionals. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We appreciate as well. So to have the opportunity to be the one to be contacted by your firm is really a privilege for us. And we really appreciate that. Uh, that being said, uh, just like you have already said uh, or mentioned, my name is Mr. Amos Kester Ibiwe. 
I'm a farmer. I like to introduce myself first as a farmer because uh, that's who I am and mm. that's what I do. And that's, what, that's where my passion lies. So I'm a farmer and I'm also an animal scientist. <laughs> like I say, mm. I always used to say in my videos, your favorite mm. animal scientist. So I'm an animal scientist and um, I'm also the MD CEO of Kesta Amos Consultancy Services Limited. We are into different areas of livestock. Of course, as an animal scientist, I'm not limited to snail farming. Snail farming. We have yeah. got lots of videos on that, but we have uh, a whole lots of activities we handle in livestock production and management. So at Kestaremos Consultancy Services Limited, we are into construction of animal farm houses or buildings. Uh -huh. We're into management and production of different farm animals, livestock, and we are also into supplies of livestock and livestock products and other farm equipment like your feeders, your feeds, and so on. So we are, an, uh, we are a consultancy company that's based here in Nigeria, Biosal Speaks to be precise, and we are into various forms of livestock production. And uh, we've gone a lot in this area of livestock production and management. Uh, where I would, I, with confidence, I can say we are a force to reckon with in Nigeria and in West Africa as a whole, because um, by the help of God, we've been able to establish well over 100 different livestock farms across. Wow, that's, 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 that's a good record. Yeah, we've built over a hundred farms in twenty across twenty-four states in Nigeria, and uh, we're also doing some preliminary work in some neighboring African countries. So I can say we are a force to reckon with in Nigeria and in West Africa when it comes to the area of livestock production and management. Wow, oh, thank you so much. I could never have done justice to that introduction. Um, there you have it. We have um, a farmer at heart and our favorite, I'm going to say our favorite animal scientist on the show. And um, thank you so much for joining us. Um, I'm, I'm going to be leaving his um, information, the link to his channel, the business contact number. It's going to be scrolling at the bottom um, of the screen so you can get in touch with him in case you want um any consultancy or any information, you know, is you can see that he's a very easygoing kind of person. So you can easily get to him and he would, you know, try to help you out. So let's um start up. Why would I start snail farm? Why would I start a snail farm? Why would I go into snail? Why would I, you know, want to, you know, be a snail farmer? Well, there are lots of reasons why you should be a snow farmer and every other person out there should be a snow farmer. Number one reason is uh, snows are hermaphrodites and one snow has both male and female reproductive organs. That's what it means by hermaphrodites. So it is to say that every single snail on this planet, especially the giant African land snails, they all produce. Uh -huh. So it's quite a good area of business to go into for the single reason that one can start from as small as your backyard and grow into commercial production. Because in today's agriculture, whether you like it or not, farming is expensive when you look at it in yeah. commercial scale. Yeah, just that a lot of persons don't really have that understanding. You know, when you say, uh, this person is a farmer, they see you as a peasant, so probably you just got something going and uh, everything is easy. It's not uh, the case these days. Farming is capital intensive, or be that as it may, in livestock production and management, uh, 60 to 70 percent of production cost is incurred in feeding of these animals, and this is where snail farming holds advantage over other forms of livestock. 
because with snow farming, the animals are naturally vegetarians and they feed on a lot of wastes or roughages that can be found or sourced within the house and around you. From reports, snails can feed on over 500 different types of plants. Wow. And these plants are found just around us. So they don't compete with man for the grains, unlike yeah. poultry, pig, and the rest. So you can have your vegetables, the leftovers, the fruits, the leftovers, and these are delicacies for snails. So as a student, you can start the pilot snail farm. As a graduate, you can start a snail farm. As a banker, as a doctor, whatever work, uh, class you belong to, you can actually have a snail farm. And one very important thing about this is it doesn't require too much of your time. Yeah. Snails are nocturnal animals. The term nocturnal means animals that are active in the night. During the daytime, they are dormant. They take shade, they look for crevices to hide themselves until in the night. That's when they become active. So for a civil servant, you can have snails, go about your normal civil service job, come back. It's in the evening that you normally attend to your snails, preferably between the hours of 5 to 7 p.m. Mm. So this allows every class of worker to have a snow farm because you have the liberty to go about your normal white collar job and come back to the home after the close of work, then it is still good timing for you to attend to your animals. Unlike poultry and other animals that you need to tend to on a daily basis, and uh, you need to attend to them maybe two, three times within the day and check out for vaccination routines and all of that. But with snails, you don't have all of this trouble. So, and of course, the production capacity is very high. Snails uh -huh. are polytogos. They are egg-laying animals and they lay lots of eggs. So the production is massive. And uh, there is also good market for it. It's one of the animals that you cannot say you have and you do not have buyers for. Rather, you will not have the capacity to supply because the demand outweighs the supply. Wow. So these are lot, there are lots of reasons why everybody or you need to go into snow farming. We can't wow. exhaust the reasons why you need to go snow farming. Wow, that's that's something. Uh, there you have it, guys. We have reasons to start off snail farmery, a farm, and um, it's a that's a world of information I just heard there. I actually just wanted you to keep, just keep going. Uh, you know, you know what? One thing is that I watch your channel episodes over and over again. I haven't actually, you know started anything to do with um snow farm but it's one of the things um you know the, the farming you know sectors i want to get into and i've been watching your your shows now for close to three four years you know just keep wow. watching and, and i haven't started yet so <laughs> i've been following you a long time you know on my own private um youtube channel but, you know, when I now started um, this show, I I knew I, you're one of the person I want to bring on because, you know, I always get that wealth of information from you. Uh, like you said, I watch all kinds of farm, you know, channels on YouTube. Some, you know, informative and some are not, you know. Some would give you what you need. Some just want to sell, you know, themselves to you. But, you know, it's, you're one of those that I'm glad that you're on the show. Um, so we always try to bring things down to the common man level here. You know, someone that doesn't have that millions of dollars or millions of Naira to say, you know, to start up. So as, um, you know, a young man, we're wanting to get into um, snail production what do I need? How much do I need? What are the, you know, things that I, I need to take care of to make sure, do I need a, a massive land, a big land? Do I need a small, just something small? How, how should my mindset be? All right, that's a good one. Uh, with snails, you can start from 
anywhere. Now, you can have a snow farm running in millions. By that, I can say you can start a snow farm with 50, 100 million. But you can also start a snow farm with zero Naira. And I'm going to tell you how. <laughs> now, uh, in starting a snow farm, there are two major qualities you must have as a snow farmer. Because the snail is not a conventional livestock, like the poultry, the goats, the cattle, the sheep, all these are conventional livestock. But with snails, they are new, they are still quite primitive. Now, uh, what you must understand is they are slow growing animals. They are not animals that give you returns on investment immediately. So before you make up your mind to go into snow farming, you must have these two qualities, which uh, must be key to success in your future endeavors in snow farming. Number one is you have to be very patient. Mm. You need to be very patient in this business. And number two, you need to be committed in this business. These are the two keys. With commitment comes passion. That's to say you need to be passionate about what you are doing. Yeah. You don't need to go into snow farming because you think your brother or your friend is into snow farming and he or she is succeeding. You don't know the motivation behind that person. You don't know what he or she has got to endure to get to that level where he or she is. So yeah. it takes a lot of patience, commitment, and passion to go into snow production. i give you an example. Uh, a snail will not get to table size until 18 months. Wow. That is yeah. one year, six months. One year, six months. But like I would always tell my clients, if you're going into commercial snail farming, leave it dormant. Don't have this mindset of my snail should be ready for the market in two weeks, in, um, in six months or eight months. No, just have the business running for two years without making any sales. Because the snails, when they grow from the head stage, when they hatch and they grow to nine months old, they now become sexually mature. We have what is called sexual maturity and physiological maturity. Sexual maturity is that age where the animal attains puberty, attains the ability to reproduce but it's not physiologically mature for it to be sold. So when it's physiologically mature, that's what we call table size snails. So for the snail to attain table size, you have to wait for at least two years, 18 months to two years. At this stage, the snail is physiologically matured and to give you a better price. So you're not in a hurry to sell off your snow. So that way you lower your expectations as well. So this will give you peace of mind in order for you to do your thing. But if you raise your expectations too high, maybe probably you've got the wrong information. Someone told you snails are going to mature by six months or they are going to mature by 10 months. And come 10 months, your snails are still small. You start running out of patience because that was your expectation. Yeah. And a lot of us here in the third world countries, we start counting or calculating how many millions we are going to make from the business before we even start the business. Yeah. And that's where the trouble lies. Probably you must have heard that there are snails that lay up to four, five hundred eggs as they go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and when you hear that, the normal thing a Nigerian or a black one or a white one will do is to multiply, okay, if I have 1,000 snails <laughs> and one is going to lay 1,000 or 500 eggs for me, uh, this is going to be good business. I will mm. have this amount of snails and I will sell each at this price. And you've not started laying blocks for the snail farm. You've already started calculating the millions that you're going to make. So when you eventually go into the business and you now discover that things are not exactly the way you are taught. You see discouragement sets in and you, you want to just back out of the business. Mm. So it doesn't really work that way. With snow farming, 
you have to go slow. You have to, to be slow. patient. You have to be committed to the business. Now, how do you start small? Or how do you start big? For a commercial snail farm, we've built farms across the country, farms worth millions, farms worth tens of thousands, and so on. But for the common man, the students, who are still trying to survive, who are still trying to make ends meet, you can actually start a snail farm without spending too much. You can have wooden pens, yeah. wooden structures. Yeah. Like if you visit our YouTube channel, you will see different systems of snow farms. You will see small scale systems for students, you will see medium scale systems, you will see large scale systems. Now, the system I've not uploaded on the channel yet is how to start a snow farm with zero naira. Now, how do you do that? Car tires are used to wear snows. And these car tires are not brand new car tires or Belgium car tires we use in our automobiles. They are car tires that are condemned. You go to the Fort Niger's shop, you have lots of tires that are just mm. wasting there. Now, if you can get a few car tires, mount three tires on one another, put a soil on the base tire, the first tire that is sitting on the floor, you fill it with soil, a humus soil. Then you lay two to three tires on top of that tire. If you have the time, the ability to go into the bush corners and pick the snails yourself. Now you have a snailery, a small scale snailery, which is the tires you have mm. arranged. But and won't, won't they like climb, um, crawl out? No, not at all. There's a provision to cover them. Oh, okay. There's there's okay. a provision for that. So the snails are secured within the tires. So once you're able to get the tires arranged, the soil, and you're able to pick snails from within and around you, you have the snails, you have the accommodation for the snails, and you have yet to spend a naira or a dollar. Mm. Now, the feed for these snails, like I said earlier, from literatures, we are meant to understand that snails feed on over 500 different types of plants. They feed on wastes, fruits and vegetables like your cucumber, watermelons, and all of this. The ones the sellers no longer use or mm. deem fit, uh, deem not fit for sale. For sale what yeah. they can sell, they keep them aside to be thrown away. They can give you those for free. You can even go into the bush corners and have best cocoyam leaves. These are natural feed materials for snails. So what you've succeeded in doing is to build a snail farm with a car tire, uh, a pair of tires. You've gotten the snails yourself and you know what to feed your snails. You're running your snail farm without spending a dime. Now you can start with this and experiment and grow from there. One thing is, when you put in all these efforts to get your snare going at zero cost, there's that motivation. And you see the snails actually producing, laying eggs, and the eggs are incubated and they are hatched. You have this joy, this inner joy that just comes that, okay, this is something I'm doing out of my home, mm -hmm. and it's actually yielding results. So it motivates you to want to continue. So you can start with car tires. You can use condemned drums. You can use baskets. You can use basins. There are lots of different systems. We give all these lectures in our YouTube channel. Of course, you're a follower and a fan. <laughs> so you know that we take time to oh, do yeah. our analysis. <laughs> so once you visit our YouTube channel, we, of course, once you subscribe, you will get loads of information. We have over 100 videos on the YouTube. Yeah. Snails, grass cutter, pig, rabbits, poultry, and so on. So, of course, we cannot say all of it today. Mm. And uh, oh, so yeah. I think yeah, that you, you're definitely going to be a regular on the show, no matter what, because I know <laughs> that I, like you said, there's a lot of... Um, uh, uh, sectors in agriculture that you've covered that we are also planning on co covering, like the grass cutter you, you mentioned. That's another topic, you know, you're going to come back to 
talk to us about. Uh, so we, we've talked about, you know, how you could start as minimal as possible. So, but for a serious minded farmer, for instance, what what are the um, aspects of getting the housing or getting the snail itself? How do you go about things like that? Okay. Uh, at Castellanos Consultancy Services Limited, basically we run consultation uh, consultancy. And what we do is, number one, we get the objectives of the client based on what he or she wants to embark on. Uh, we look at the skill. When you tell us what you want to do, we scale it. If it falls under small scale, medium scale, or large scale, then we now look at the land available for it the project and mm -hmm. give you an estimate of what the project may cost you. Uh, basically, we have two different systems of snail farming, but with livestock generally, we have three systems of production, or call them livestock management systems or production systems, which are the extensive system, the semi-intensive system, and the intensive system. The intensive. But with snails, you cannot practice, you cannot practice extensive system because uh, extensive system is more like a free range. Mm -hmm. um, animals are allowed to roam about, roam about yeah. for food and uh, shelter on their own, but they always know where the owner's house is. In the evening, they come back within the premises of the owner's house. A typical example of that is uh, small-scale poultry, like local chickens. You see them running around yeah. everywhere. You're, you see your neighbor's chicken in the distance, but in the evening when you come back it home, still comes you back home. That, yeah, it comes back home. So those are domesticated animals, animals that have been tamed, like the ruminants, the cattle, the goats, the sheep, mm -hmm. and they practice under extensive system. But with snails, you can't practice extensive system because the animal is yet to be tamed. Mm. Yeah, you cannot keep the snail. If you like, keep the snail in your house for three years. The day you uh -huh. release it and it finds the it's nearest gone. forest, <laughs> it tells you bye-bye. It's not coming back. Yeah. So because of that, we can't farm snails under extensive system. Rather, we refer to that as capture snail. Uh, the heart of hunters going into the forest to pick out snails in the bush and making mm. them available in the market the next day. Uh, which is something animal scientists like us discourage greatly because uh, every animal has a definite number and a definite number at a particular period of time. And the snail is already classified as a threatened species of animal because of overexploitation. Mm. You can't imagine the amount of snails that have been evacuated from the forest on a daily basis by hunters. And mm. this is not good for the species. Even though they produce a mass, but it depletes the species population in the natural habitat. So we try as much as possible to discourage uh, capture snail, which is also seasonal. You have abundance of snails during the rainy season. Yeah. During the dry season, like the period we have now, snails are in excavation. Yeah. They seal up their mouth with a white material. I don't know if you've seen that before. And, uh, no. They can, First they time. I'm reading about it. Yeah, we call that expedition. It's, oh, okay. defined, it's defined as a period of dormancy that results mm. in loss. So, so, like, so sort of like I'm hibernating, right? Yes, yes, but we call it estivation. Mm. So the snails will seal up between the months of November to March, which is the peak of the dry season in Nigeria because of lack of moisture in the soil. So that's why we term it a period of dormancy that results in loss of valuable growing time. So uh, that being said, snails can only be read under the semi-intensive and the intensive system. So mm -hmm. for a commercial farm, you have to look at either doing both or doing one of them. And now the challenges you will have with going with strictly the intensive system is space. The intensive system is a system you use block walls, you construct trench pens mm. and put snails in each of the pens, like you've seen me do in most of my YouTube videos. Yeah. Now, each of those pens, based on the dimensions, have definite number of snails that they accommodate or that are contained in the pens. 
uh, probably maximum of 100 snails in a particular pen for the young ones while the breeding snails because they require a lot more space, maximum of 50 per pen. Now the snail produces a lot. And for you to, assuming you want to build a hundred pen, which is what we term small scale for commercial mm. startup, constructing a hundred pens from the block work and the roofing, that's gonna cost you roughly 3.5 million naira, which is a okay. lot of money. Nah, yeah, which is. is a lot of money. Yeah. Now, when you have these 100 pens, uh, you're not expected to stock up all the 100 pens. Mm. Because if you stock up all the 100 pens, when they start laying eggs, you don't have mm -hmm. where to get the eggs. You won't have the space for them. Attachments. Yeah. So, usually, what we do is if you have 100 pens, you stock 20 of those pens, probably with the ratio of 50 mm. snails per pen. 1,000 snails will take up 20 pens. So you are left with 80 pens. Now, out of these 80 pens, you apportion two or three for incubation. So once the snails lay their eggs, we sort out the eggs and incubate the eggs. And when the eggs hatch, we move the young hatchlings to the empty pens. So this buys you time in order to expand the farm. But the challenge that most of our clients have with this is because the snails produce in high capacity. You may be having a projection that, okay, after one year, I'm going to invest more to expand the farm. But you discover that in six months, everywhere is filled up. <laughs> you don't have space. Have the and space now you job. start stocking them in a high capacity, which is high stocking density, which will lead to high levels of mortality mm. as well. So that is why it's when you're going into commercial production, it's always advised that you have both the concrete pen system and the greenhouse free range system. Now, how do they complement themselves? The concrete pens makes it easier for you to monitor the progress of the business. Because under this intensive system in the pens, you can keep accurate records. You can take data on the farm. You know exactly how many snails were introduced on the farm. Mm. And you can also monitor the egg laying process. You can incubate the eggs yourself, which should be done at a particular temperature for better hatching. Because if you don't do that, you just allow the snails to lay the eggs and they just hatch on their own. The hatching percentage will be low to start with. And there will be lots of casualties because the, yeah. young, the very young snails and the parent stock cannot live together at that stage within the same pen, especially when you have them on a concrete pen. So that yeah. is the essence why you need to take out the eggs incubate them in a particular pen. We call that incubator. We prepare the soil, especially for that purpose. So it also helps to boost the hatchability. The number of eggs that hatch increases because of the special conditioning of the soil. So this will help to increase productivity on the farm. And most importantly, it helps you to keep records because the greatest predator to snails it's not soldier hands. It's not millipedes. It's not lizards. It's not centipedes. But it is man. Mm. When your farm yeah, attendants or your farm manager becomes a predator, your business <laughs> will go down the drain. Yeah. Because without accurate record keeping, you may be investing your money. Your farm attendants or manager may be helping you to do the sales and putting the money in his pocket. All you do is when you come back, they will tell you, I will lost 200 snails. How were the snails? Uh, how did they die? You don't know about it. Where are the dead snails? You don't know about it because they've been they're playing a fast one on you. So the concrete pen helps you to curb all of these excesses because you know exactly how many snails that were brought into the farm. The farm attendants and the manager knows exactly the number of snails. So if any snail dies, as a farm manager, you are expected to keep the dead snail and the dead body of the snails for the owner to come and verify. Clarify. Or the farm supervisor 
to come and verify and ensure that the mortality or the number of death snails are recorded on the farm records and accounts. So this way, everybody in the farm is under check. You can check theft and the snails are better managed because of the controlled environment. Now the case of estivation is also broken out because like I defined, estivation is a period of dormancy that results in loss of valuable growing time. Because in the wild, during the dry season, the snails no longer lay egg because of the harsh environmental conditions, the mm -hmm. hamatang, the dryness, the dryness. lack of moisture. Yeah. So they seal up their mouth with a white calcareous tissue, we'll call epigraph. And they remain in that dormant state for the next five months, between the months of November five and March. Months. Yeah. Between the months of November to March. But they will not die, even though they are not feeding from the external environment. They have a food reserve in them that between the months of July to October, they take in a lot of food and store. They don't make use of it. They only use little portion of it, but they store the bulk of the food they consume between July and October because of the dormancy period between November and March. So during this period where they seal up their mouths and they don't move anymore, they regurgitate, bring mm. back that feed that is stored and continue to use it as maintenance energy. So that is what keeps them alive through this dominant period, this dormant period. But when you have the snails under intensive system, this dormancy period is broken because you have to wet the pens on daily basis. Okay. So the snails cannot differentiate between dry season and rainy season. They are cold-blooded animals. They require moisture in their environment. It has to be humid and cold. So your application of water on daily basis in the snail pens help to keep the snails laying all year round, mm, irrespective okay. of dry season or rainy season. Mm. So you now see that the production rates becomes higher, higher. when you practice an intensive system oh, okay. coupled with a free range greenhouse system. Now, where does the greenhouse come in? Because of space management and the concrete pens, you must have a greenhouse when you have commercial production in mind. Now the greenhouse is a natural, a semi-intensive system. It's controlled. We have videos of them on our YouTube uh, channel, of course. You have a vegetation inside the greenhouse that is meant for the snows, for feeding. So the particular grasses, fruits, vegetables that the snails feed on are already cultivated inside the greenhouse. So when the mature snails in the concrete pens lay the eggs, we take out the eggs and incubate them. And when the eggs hatch, the young snailettes or hatchlings, we move them into the greenhouse because of the vegetation in the greenhouse. The snails tend to grow faster in the greenhouse because they have a wider range of area to move as opposed to the small cubicles on the concrete pens. So this way you have snails that are growing faster. You also have a lower production cost because the bulk of the money you would have used to purchase commercial feed for the snails. What the snails need to feed are already cultivated. Cultivated in the, in the greenhouse. So, and this greenhouse, by our standard, we do eight meters by 30 meters greenhouse. This will take maximum of 80,000 snails within oh. an area of eight meters by 30 meters. But if you have this same portion of land for concrete pens, it won't take more than 10,000 snails. Oh, okay. So you can see the difference because of the access, the freedom to move. So, so can, system, sorry to cut you, can someone, can someone now decide to do the greenhouse without doing the concrete? Because yeah. I remember you saying that you it will be, you have to complement both, right? Yes, but you can as well start with strictly just the greenhouse. Okay. 
yeah, you can start with the greenhouse. What you do is, if you're starting with the greenhouse, you introduce the breeding snails inside the greenhouse, so they live naturally okay. in the greenhouse. They do the egg laying there. The eggs will hatch on their own, and the young ones will continue to grow with them. Because of the wide space, there's no issue of them coming in contact, close proximity, and all of that. So the young ones can also survive. The mature adults can also survive mm-hmm. in that system. But what's very important is you have to be sure of who manages your farm under so the circumstances, because you cannot keep good production records if you have only the uh, the greenhouse system, because the snails are more or less living like they are in their natural habitat. They lay, they reproduce naturally. So at no point will you know the exact number of snails inside the greenhouse. Mm. So you just have to be very mindful who you employ as a farm manager. It has to be a trusted hand. Or you can have the farm built inside your compound if you have the space. Like there's a project I did in Asaba. Uh, The farm was built inside the compound of the owner of the house. Uh, of the farm rather so he manages it himself. himself and it's so easy to manage because there are automatic sprinklers that are installed inside so you mm. don't have to go through the rigors of going to water the greenhouse going to sort for eggs and all of that so all you have to do is you own the sprinklers the greenhouse will wet itself naturally with the sprinklers and all you do is feed them with the concentrate feed, because we have snail feeds. We produce mm. snail feeds, just like you have poultry feeds. We have mm. feeds for snails. So all you have to do is go in there, spray the feed on the vegetation or on the platforms that are meant for the feed to be placed. And with that, you are good to go. So one person can manage 100, 200,000 snails in greenhouses. It's a lot more easier and cheaper to maintain. So you can have just a greenhouse as well. Wow, that's 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 something. Uh, it's um, a wealth of information, especially talking to you. I, I didn't even have to say much because you're just like, from everything I have in mind to ask you, you're like <laughs> cutting through it without me even having to ask you. Uh, it's always good to talk to someone that knows, you know, what they're doing. It's, it's, it makes, you know, things a lot easy for you. So um, we have some view, viewers uh, watching us that I would just want to quickly say hi to before we continue. Um, so we have um, Ayuba um, Shoeb Kawal saying um, good um, evening hall. Um, he's also... F- um, from Nigeria as well, watching us live. Thank you so much, um, Ayuba. Um, we have um, Sabina, um, who says, uh, good evening. This is um, S.O. Centenis, Agro Allied Ventured. Well done to Amos. I'm very sure it's probably someone that knows you. Um, thank you so much. Uh, we have Margaret um, Ogundukbe. Yeah, you know, funny enough, that's actually my mom. She's one of my greatest fans. She's watching as well. Uh, thank you, mom, for always watching. Um, thank you, um, Chukabdi, uh, who says, um, true, but there, there is wide, they, oh, there is wild, um, wider market for beef as well as higher net profits and tax. Yeah. Um, I believe he's talking about, um, you know, the difference between beef production and, um, you know, snail production. Um, yeah, we we know that, but um, like you said, the show is all, um, all about um, different aspects of, um, you know, agriculture. So um, you, you can go on the channel and watch um, the part um, we talk about um, cattle production. Um, we have Sunday um, Robert here, who says, um, nice job, brother. God bless. Uh, we have Daniel Christover, who also says, uh, may God continue to bless you where, uh, wherever you go, sir. Your kindness will, will never bring shame to you. Thank you so much, um, Daniel, for you know being on here with us. Uh, we have um, Shina Shina Kinsoya, who says, um, good job, guys. Thanks. Uh, so... 
thank you so much guys for joining us um remember to share like and subscribe um on our channel and also like i said um, i have kester's um amos um details scrolling um beneath, under the screen uh please do go on his channel like it subscribe and um share as well um he knows what he's talking about guys i, I, I you know that's one thing i would tell you um go watch his channel he, he will be able to you know give you um good information um we have Aki ade Aki alabi who says uh thank you mentor you are doing a wonderful job love you um we also have ayuba still saying you know you are inspiration sir amos kester Thank there you, you go so i'm not the only fan of amos as well i have a lot of guys on here um and, and anthony clement also say more grace brother so <laughs> thank you, you so much guys for joining us live um my my next question is um about feeding and um getting the snails itself I know, yeah, you could go into the bush, you know, into the forest and things like that to get them. But um, if I want, I'm starting up, I don't want to do that. And, you know, how do I get these snails? Where do I get them from? And also the feed itself. Let's say I don't have a, a greenhouse. How do I, you know, procure the, the feeds? How do I get them? you know, both the commercial feed and also, you know, any other feed that um, we can use. How do I go about getting them? Well, uh, that's not a problem. Like, at Kestaimos Consultancy Services Limited, we are also into supplies of livestock and livestock products, like I earlier okay. said in my introduction. We, we have lots of snails to supply, you can always contact us uh, through uh, the information being displayed here. Now, phone number via the call or WhatsApp or leave a comment on our YouTube channel. I uh, will supply you the snails. Any quantity of snails you need, you can always call on us. We can do as much as 10,000, 20,000 snails per week. So we have lots of snails uh, because we've been breeding for quite a, a good number of years and also uh, it's a way uh, we help to market our clients business because okay. after setting up these farms for our clients we don't just leave them alone mm -hmm. uh, in times of sales when we have large orders we go back to them uh, mm -hmm. sometimes not that we don't have but there are some orders that will come and uh, we have to go back to them, like any of them that call us that their snails are ready for sale. We link them up to the buyer or we help to market for the client. So that's why Kestaremos Consultancy Services stands out. We don't just build the farms and let go of the clients. We build and when the client has snails readily available to sell uh, and they give us that Free notice we help them to market once clients come calling. Uh, we may not be able to market them immediately because we have to wait for a client to come calling before we can uh -huh. give you that call and say, okay, Mr. A is ready to uh, buy. Do you have what he needs? Especially if the call is coming from a close proximity to where you have. Like I said, we have constructed well over uh, 100 farms across 24 states in Nigeria. So uh, if we have calls from Enugu and we have a client who have built a farm for in Enugu and uh, he has snails readily available for sale, we wouldn't have to bother ourselves going through the trouble of supplying the snails from Bayosa. We'll have to call that client there and he will do the supply. So it's a way of us marketing the product as well for our clients. Now, also for the feed, uh, we have concentrate feeds, like formulated match for snails. Uh, we formulate the feed based on the nutritional requirements of the animal. Every livestock feed is formulated based on the nutrient requirements of the animal. 
So just as you have pigs for poultry and for pig and for snails, and so, so also we have pig for snow. So should in case you need the formulated concentrated pig, you can always give us a call through our, our WhatsApp or through our phone number as displayed on the channel here. Uh, we'll attend to your needs. And if you subscribe to our channel, you will see us doing a whole lot of work on feeding of snails with both natural vegetables, fruits, and other raw foods, and also the formulated pig. So all of these things have been broken down and spelled out on our YouTube channel. We've even gone as far as uh, uh, put up a video on how to formulate the feed. It's also on our YouTube channel. So there are a lot of things that, um, a lot of content we have on our YouTube channel that can benefit the populace. So all you need to do is uh, click on the red subscribe button and click on the bell icon. So whenever we are uploading videos, you can have a notification to see the video immediately it pops up. So those are some of the things we do. So um, we are really in depth in livestock management. Uh, we can see more. We practically see everything in our YouTube videos. Sometimes oh. we have some professional colleagues that questions our our videos that we give out too much information. But uh, <laughs> the, the, the objective is for us to be a part of the solution and not the problem. So if yeah, what, what, what most, most um, people don't understand is that um, a, a true farmer never hides how he does it. That's just the reality of it. Over yeah. here, if you're, good, if you're a real farmer, you're always willing to help the next farmer. To get to that yeah. point because you you can't feed you can't feed everybody it's not no, possible not <laughs> yeah. so you, there's always going to be market for your product for your you know your produce and things like that but that's you know another you know topic for another day um like like um kessa said um make sure you you go on his um you, you youtube channel um i have the details um you know, showing up on there. It's very easy. It's um, just um, Kesta Amos. Just search that and you see, you know, his videos on there. Do go subscribe, share it, um, like it, click on the notification button um, on there and um, you get more information that you would get on here because uh, there's a lot we can't talk about here right now. He is so easy talking to. We spent almost an hour and we haven't actually touched you know, most of this, you know, aspect of snail production. There's a lot we can talk about, you understand? So, um, guys, um, do go on there, like his um, video, share, and um, subscribe to it as well. And also do that um, for our channel as well, so that we'll be, we'll be able to bring in more people like Kesta on here. And we can also have Kesta as a regular as well. As long as you, you keep liking us, we'll keep bringing him, you know, to share on other aspect of um, animal production. Um, I have a question from Owo Juni Olufemi for you, um, Kesta. He, he wants to know uh, from our, um, hatch to maturity, how many months does um, it take for a snail to fully mature? I know you've answered that, but because it came in very late, I just would want you to touch base on that again. Yeah, uh, that's correct. I already answered that in passing. Well, from hatching to maturity, it takes about 18 months from the hatching stage to a table size snail. But like I said, there's a difference between uh, sexual maturity and physiological maturity. Uh, sexual maturity comes in at nine months. From hatching to nine months, the snail starts laying eggs, but it's not physiologically mature. So that's to say it hasn't attained table size. So you have to wait for another nine months to allow the snail to get to 18 months or preferably two years before you think about selling the snail. So that way it can bring you better returns. But of course, that's not to say they are, uh, you cannot sell your snails when they are very young. Uh, there are people who just need the snail at six weeks old, 
they made them at five weeks old. Uh, for for example, there was a time I had a company that approached me. They wanted two hundred thousand snails per month. Uh, they came in all the way from Lagos. It was a serious business, and I was just asking myself, where am I going to get two hundred thousand snails per month from? Supply this wow. So there's market for snails at every stage. But to answer your question, the full maturity period for snails is 18, 18 months to 24 months. That's about two years. All right, cool. There you go, Wojini. I hope that answers your question. And if you want to, um, if you want more clarification, you can always contact um, Kesta. I have his number scrolling on there. Um, his consultancy services as well. His YouTube um, um, name is on there. So just go ahead and contact him and you should be able to get um, more information from him. Um, I have um, Sabina also on here. At this period of Amatan, there are some black flies that are usually in the pen. Please, how do you get rid of them? All right, the issue of flies has to be dealt with from the stage of construction. You construct your pens in a, such a way that it takes care of issues of predators and parasites, especially with the intensive system. Even with the free range rain out system, which we construct, we put all of that into consideration to ensure that nothing goes in and nothing goes out. So in order to take care of the issue of fly burdens, which we classify as snail parasites, you have to have a, a net over your pens. If they're intensive uh -huh. pens, you have to have a small, uh, this type of window mesh we use for windows in, uh, here in Nigeria. Uh, some of them call it mosquito net. You have to use that net to screen the top, the opening of your pens, and also use the wire mesh the type they use for poultry chicken houses. On top of that, so you're expected to have two types of mesh. The mosquito net comes first, then the wire mesh on top of that. The reason why you have to use both nets is because if you use only the mosquito net, it's gonna keep away flies, like the trouble you're having now, but it can't keep away reptiles, like uh, lizards, mm. and also other rodents. So mm. they can easily use their claws to pull it apart. So mm. Even if they don't go in, it permits flies to go in. So that's why you use the chicken wire mesh on top of the mosquito net. So when lizards and other reptiles climb on it, they'll have to deal with the wire mesh on top first. And that is impossible for them to gain access to. So that way your snails are secured from flies, and also reptiles and other predators. Okay, that, that's cool. Uh, th um, I hope you um, get that, um, Sab um, Sabina. Um, thank you so much, Kester, for answering that question. Um, one of your YouTube videos, which I remember very well, was one of the very first one I saw, where you were constructing the wooden pen. You remember that yeah. video? Yeah, yeah. Those wooden yeah. pen, there's... I, I've watched that video over and over again because it gave me the perspective of I actually don't have to have um, this huge land for me to do anything. You understand that? It could be done any, anywhere. So can you, we just talk a little bit about, about that video? What was um, your think, thinking about that video? Why, why, when you came up with it? And also, what do you think the, the production cost for such would be? Well, uh, truly, it's a small-scale project. Mm. And uh, like I mentioned on that particular video, I did that video at uh, Eket in Akwaibom State, Nigeria. Mm. Uh, usually, projects like that don't bring me down because it's a small-scale one. I prefer to do an online consultation for such projects. Mm. But I was motivated to go and do that video because I wanted it to be a student's pilot project. Though the person I was doing it for is not a student, it's someone that's well to do it. But I wanted, it, it's kind of pro, uh, present, it was an opportunity for me to talk to the Nigerian youth. That was mm. the motivation behind that video. 
So I had to travel all the way to five home states to set up that farm and make that video where I was more or less talking to uh, the youth directly. Now, the objective was achieved because uh, a lot of views came out. Uh, that video had lots of views and uh, it mm, got yeah. lots of uh, attention. Now, it's a small scale system. It's a pilot. That's what we we'll call a pilot. You can practice with even not everybody thinks the same. I've built, I'm currently building a farm that's going to start off with 40,000 breeders. Mm. That's someone that has a lot of cash. Oh. But even if you have a lot of cash sometimes, there are some persons who have lots of money but are too afraid to mm. take the bull by the horn. Yeah. So for people like that, if you have desire, you have passion, you want to do it, and you're too scared, to start on a large scale, you can start with something like that. Mm -hmm. So with that, you can burn your hand or make progress with it. If you have any losses there, it's a lower risk. Yeah. So with that, you can practice probably three, four, five months and see how this thing is. Maybe you want, like I used to tell my students in school back then, I said, okay, maybe probably after listening to this video, you want to say, I guess that talks too much. <laughs> Let me see if this thing is saying is for real. Mm. You get a project like that to start with. And with that, you learn the heart. You see the rudiments, how this whole thing works. That project is actually, we constructed nine of those hutches. Mm. And we stocked two of them. We brought out four. Okay, we stocked the four of them, yeah. Because we stocked 200 snails, 50 to a pen. So the four okay. pens were used in that garage. Yeah. yeah. So with that, you can start. With those 200 snails, in the next two, three, four months, you should have gained experience on how the snail farming business works. Number one, how the snails are managed in terms of feeding, in terms of egg laying, how the eggs are incubated, the hashing process, you would have gone through all these routine management practices with that small skill. So it gives you confidence to want to expound. That is for the class that has the resources but are too afraid to mm. set up something big. Set up, you yeah. want to see it for real first before you invest. Yeah. So that's, that's one objective. The second objective is to make the Nigerian youth see that there's something you can actually do to keep yourself busy, to give you this feel of responsibility. Instead of just staying at home, thinking about where you're going to get the next job, where you're going to submit your next CV, and all of that, you can actually do something. And something that will give you joy, a sense of responsibility that truly, I am doing something. You don't know where the opportunity is going to pop up from. Probably you're doing that and someone visits and see you doing very well with it. You can get a sponsorship to start something bigger with that. So mm. that was actually the motivation behind me going to do those three videos for that project. Uh, the project was estimated at 200000 at the time I did that. I think sometime last year, early last year, mm. 2020, if I'm not mistaken, I did that project. Each of those hush boxes were constructed for 30,000 naira because we had to use very strong woods. Mm. You know the history between water and wood. So if we use soft woods, the continual watering, watering moistening of the pens is going to destroy the wood. Yeah. So we had to use hard wood. Uh, and with those woods, those pens can last for two, two years, three years. And by that time, you must have achieved your objective, your set goals for that project in order to expand from there. Wow. Yeah. Well, thank you for that. Um, I actually have the video link um, on screen as well. Um, it's like um, at the bottom corner there, right or left, somewhere there. Um, you can click on that to watch um the video and you should also be a link to Kester's channel. Uh, like, like I said, um, uh, it's one of the videos I've watched over and over again. 
Um, uh, thank you so much, Kester. We try to keep it between an hour, fifty minutes there about. We, we but uh, you know we still have a lot to talk to you about, especially about the snail production. Not to talk of other stuff that we need to talk about. So we're going to be making you commit to us that you're going to be coming back anytime we call you. <laughs> you you can't say no because like you you've you've told us you are our favorite animal scientist <laughs> and we need to have you back on the show with us so uh, we're very grateful for having you so we would just like you to give like um you know a formal closing what you would advise someone that wants to start um you know someone that is um you know just starting up what's going to be your you know advice generally it's okay uh I just hope by this point you're saying I should state a closing remark. You haven't forgotten that I've got a lot of people to appreciate because a lot of oh yeah, you can you so can go ahead and to get no, you know what, Kesta? I remember. Go ahead, do that before okay. you say your closing remark. Just okay. go ahead and That's do that, good. okay? Yeah, because uh, it is said that honor should be given to them. Oh yeah, honor. definitely. You're 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 right uh, about that. Yeah, just go okay. ahead and do that. Yeah. So I really want to appreciate uh, a lot of persons uh, because Kessarimos Consultancy Services Limited was born out of uh, a lot of advice, fatherly advice, and so on. A lot of persons have put uh, a lot of efforts for us to get where we are. And um, it's, it's not just going to go down well after doing this video and not being able to appreciate their efforts. So I want to firstly uh, thank my wife, uh, Mrs. Amos Esther, if you will, who has been uh, like a mother. I wouldn't say like a mother. She's been a mother. She, she's more like a, a force uh, uh, that has propelled me down to where I am today. So I really want to appreciate her that all she's done to get me to where I am today. I would never forget that, and I would. I promise to be uh, the best husband she would have ever gotten on this earth, as I've tried to do. I also want to shout out to my one-year-old baby, uh, oh, yeah. Esther, Ibuwe, Pereri, Amos. Uh, I want them to know that I love them so much. These are my family, and in fact, Every day when I journey on the road and does my consultancy services and everything, these are the people that keeps me going. Uh, I just want to shout out to my family that I love them so much. And their love is, is always going to remain in my heart. Also, I want to thank um, two very important persons in my life too, which are my elder sister, Marian Boss, who was directly uh, like a mother to me, uh, of course. There are some things we don't see here, but and she understands what I mean when I said she's like a mother to me. She was really a mother, nursing me, cared for me in every way you want to think about it. So I want to thank her and appreciate her for all she's done for me. And also my elder brother, Mr. Emma Motsmi, Amos Yeriyeri, who also played the father role in my life through school. And uh, there's a lot I could say to him, and I can't just say it all. But I want you to know that I love you so much and thank you for all you've done for me. And I also want to talk uh, a little about two more very important personalities that have prompted this Castaimos Consultancy Services Limited to where it is. Uh, I want to thank my pastor, impression of Apostle Anthony Clement Esquire. In fact, he came up with the name Kestaimos Consultancy Services Limited and also registered the company. So it's been a father naturally and a father spiritually. I want him to know that all he's taught me has brought me this far. Thank you. God bless you, Daddy. I also want to thank my professor and a mentor while I was still in the university in person of Professor PCN Alikwe. As a professor in uh, nutritional biochemistry, Department of Animal Science, Niger Delta University. As my mentor, he brought 
in fact, the idea of snail farming, I learned it through him. So I, I want to appreciate him with this medium to know that I appreciate all he's done for me. And also, uh, most of all, I have to give all glory to God because uh, he's the ultimate. He's the one that keeps me breathing this hair. And also the knowledge and the wealth of knowledge and everything I have attained today is all down to him. I want to appreciate this God. And that is why if you listen to my videos at the end, I always say thank you and God bless you. Because without God, we are nothing. Yeah, we are Nigerians. Uh, we believe in God. We yeah. know God is foremost in everything. So everything. we should always be so, proud to say it any day, any time. You yeah, know, so, so I that's good. God for all is done. And also, there are a lot of people I can thank, where I can call them one after the other. So I just yeah. want to thank every member of my family. I want to thank my manager, a person of uh, Mr. Banambele Abarowe, who has been an ally, a friend, a booty. I want to say a big shout out to him as well. He's actually sitting on the other side of the camera. I'll tell yeah. him to come on. Oh, he's the one with the camera, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, it's all right. Okay, I'll just give you a minute to say thank you. This is my money. Hi. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. So, uh, thank you. Thank you for everything and all my family and friends. And also my fans, for those who have actually been subscribing and viewing our channels for your comments and all you've been doing to promote the channel. I want you to know that we appreciate all your effort. It is you that keeps us going. So the more likes, the more subscriptions you, you do gives us uh, a lot of joy. And we appreciate all you have been doing to help us succeed. And we are also doing the best we can to give you the, the very best once you come to livestock production and management. So to the general public, I want to advise the average Nigerian youth that there is scope for Nigeria. Uh, we shouldn't go about uh, just castigating and talking down on the, the, the economy and all of that. There's time for everything. If something you cannot solve, you just have to pray about it. So instead of you blaming Mr. A e and Mr. B, sometimes we have to look at ourselves and think, what can we do to better this nation? Like I graduated over uh, eight years ago. I've not taken my CV anywhere but you can see the opportunities that have come my way to do because I dared to set out as a youth to do something reasonable with my life. I have a lot of graduates who graduated with me same time. None of them, most of them are not even looking towards agriculture, what they study. But you can see how far I've come. That is born out of determination. The, the, the platform was not laid for me. I had to walk into it. I have to set it myself. So if I can do it, you can do it. Nigeria is a great nation. And don't ever regret being a Nigerian. Because I will always remember what my pastor said. Nobody negotiated with God which country to be born or created. There's nobody that negotiated with God that I want to be born an American or to be born uh, a <laughs> yeah. Malian. So you need to appreciate yourself and appreciate your country because... God knows Nigeria is the best country for you. That's why he made you in Nigeria. Oh, yeah. So you have to work for it. Life is not a bed of roses. I didn't get here on a platter of gold. I had to work for it. And with the help of God, I have come this far. So I want to say thank you to everybody. God bless you. God bless uh, Farm Up TV for bringing me up here today. I really appreciate you. Uh, two, three years down the line, if someone had told me I would get a call from Canada and be on this station today, I would never have believed it. So this is a big opportunity for me, and I really appreciate the call. And just like you requested, anytime you think you need my services, and I'm just a phone call away from you <laughs> or a WhatsApp chat away from you. Thank you. Thank so you thank so much. You. God bless Amen. Yeah. Amen. God Amen bless Farm Hub TV. Amen and God to that. Bless Nigeria.
Uh, thank you so much, Kesta. We're very grateful to have you on the show. Uh, like I said, uh, we still have a lot to talk about because um, it's it's just wealth of information from you. Um, so, guys, remember, go on um, Kesta's um, YouTube channel. I have it on screen on there. Just um, click on that link and you should be able to get it. And uh, if not, just search um, Kesta Amos and it's going to come up. And um, do subscribe to his channel, like it, share it, uh, click on the not notification button, and um, you know you you won't regret ever going on his channel. There's there's information there for you guys. Um, I, like I told you, I've been on his channel for close to two three years now, and I've, I'm still on it. I still watch it. In fact, this morning I still watch um something on his channel this morning as well. So and um, like I said. You know, I'm a fan of yours. Uh, being just continue being who you are, and um, by God's grace, everything is going to you know keep getting better and better, and bigger and bigger for for you and the company and for the family. And thank you everybody for you know bringing up a good man here. You 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 know you've helped him to where he's. I'm also saying thank you to you guys. Um, to madam, your brother, sister, you know, pastor, everybody. Thank you for bringing up a good man here. And um, we, we are Nigerians. We need to be proud of our own. We need to, you know, appreciate who we are. And uh, we need to let people know that we we are hardworking, we are strong, we are, we are, we are the best of the best as well. So um, and on Farm Up TV, we are family. So, and um, we, we believe in God as well. So don't let anybody shy away from saying amen or a little prayer here and there because we do believe in God. And that's um, who we are and we're proud of it. Um, so uh, we're going to be rounding up the show right now. We're going to have you back on there on another topic or even continuation of this well, you and I will talk on WhatsApp about, you know, whatever we're going to do next. So thank you so much for joining the show. And remember, guys, um, there's this saying that we started on the show. Um, no farmer, no food. You don't farm, you don't get fed. So we need, you know, good farmers. We need to do it right. And uh, that's why we're here. That's what the show is all about. Trying to get, you know, people like Kester, get good information out there and um, let's um, keep on farming and um, feeding our nation. Nigeria, we need to go back to the farm. That's where, you know, things will start changing for us. If we can feed ourselves in Nigeria, things will start getting better. So let's go back to the farm. That's my little, you know, information I'm going to pass out there today. Thank you so much. Um, till we come back your way, you know, a few days time, next week, whatever. God bless you guys and everybody that joined us on the show uh, from um, Ayuba to um, Sunday, Chuka, uh, Sabina, um, Akin Ade, uh, Moron Lake, Ben Ben, you know, thank you guys. Thank you for being part of the show and thank you for viewing the show, you know, with us. I know what it is, you know, to view a show in Nigeria for one hour. So <laughs> thank you so much, guys. Uh, we appreciate you and uh, we love you too. We'll come back your way next time. Uh, click on um, the notification button on our YouTube channel. Subscribe to it. And also on Facebook, do like or share and um, we'll be back with you as soon as uh, we can. God bless.